Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is read responsively by whole verse. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put on trust in extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. A reading from Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he said to them, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So one thing that Faith Lutheran Church shares with almost all other churches who complete the church assessment tool, the CAT, is your response to the question asking where you would like additional energy placed 
to expand or improve your ministries. You, along with almost all other churches, identified your number one priority as make necessary changes to attract families with children and youth to our church. Perhaps you heard last year about a church, not a Lutheran church, in a Twin Cities, Minnesota suburb, who in response to declining membership, asked its older parishioners to leave in hopes of making it more attractive to young families. I know. <laughs> the church was scheduled to close this past June with plans to relaunch this past November. The members, most of them over 60 years old, were invited to worship elsewhere. And after two years, consult with the pastor about returning to the church. Church officials said a declining church located in a suburb that is rapidly growing in population with young families needed a reset. And they felt the best way was to appeal to younger people. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. About an hour west of this church, another church in the same denomination had already gone through its reset process, relaunching in October, 2019. The local newspaper reported that the festivities during the relaunch party would include a free catered lunch, live band, a bounce house, an ice cream machine, and free DeLorean rides to go with their relaunch theme back to church events. I haven't followed either church to see how their plans worked out for them. They may very well have caught a lot of people in their fishing net. But today's gospel reading invites us to consider the juxtaposition of Jesus' call to follow me and I will make you with this quote from a member of the church's reset committee about their vision for their future. Our main focus, the committee member said, is to attract more members. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. It is clear to me that asking your older members to stay away for a while would never be a model that Faith Lutheran Church would choose to revitalize your community and ministries. Not only because that would eliminate a large percentage of your membership, but mostly because you have shown me how much you appreciate and respect the wisdom, faith, and experience of your brothers and sisters in Christ who are over 60 years of age. And you also recognize God's beauty in intergenerational community. But you do find yourselves in an anxious time of acknowledging your financial resources and addressing the low levels of energy and satisfaction indicated in your cat. So if you're feeling anxious, sad, angry, frustrated, you are not alone. I guarantee there is not one of you who is as cool as a cucumber. Your very emotion, human emotions are the natural reactions of grieving what was while holding on to the community, relationships, traditions and ministries that have brought so much meaning to your life and strengthened your faith. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. I believe these churches had good intentions, but their anxious focus on survival blinded them from remembering that identity, who and whose we are, must always come before mission. Otherwise, our choices and our actions speak more about us than they do about Jesus. It is going to be so important during this time of intentional collaboration of faith leadership and membership in discernment of how God is calling faith Lutheran into God's future, that you listen to each other's perspectives and ideas and filter them through your foundation in faith's newly articulated why your understanding of who you are, why you are, your purpose, to love and serve our neighbors and share our faith in God 
so that others may feel God's love and acceptance. So that others may feel God's love and acceptance. The passion of that phrase came out clearly in your congregational conversation about articulating your why. And it's a perfect segue into this morning's gospel lens. In this story of Jesus calling fishermen to follow him, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. When Jesus promises to make us, it's a commitment to nurture us. It's a promise rooted in gentleness and respect. It's a promise that when we dare to let go, to change our way of thinking, which is the Greek meaning of the word repent in today's gospel reading, what we let go of might be returned to us enlivened and refreshed in ways that we couldn't have imagined on our own. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. So often this story is preached or taught in ways that focus only on us and the commitment we make instead of on God, preventing us from hearing Jesus call as a promise from God to us, not from us to God. Theologian and Bible scholar, Barbara Brown Taylor, marvels at these four fishermen who immediately follow. No hesitation, no questions asked. Is this because they're men of some kind of superhuman courage or some kind of prophetic knowledge? Of course not. <laughs> these are the same guys who later in the gospels will doubt, deny, and abandon Jesus. They're as fallible and as ordinary as the rest of us. No, they immediately follow Jesus because Jesus makes it possible for them to do so. This is not a story about us, Taylor writes. It is a story about God and about God's ability, not only to call us, but also to create us as people who are able to follow. Able to follow because we cannot take our eyes off of the one who calls us. Immediately. Let's take a moment to acknowledge that how each of you perceives the amount of time faith should take to decide how you will move forward from your here and now, the range of perceived acceptable time has the potential to create the kind of conflict that will prevent you from being able to move forward. The level to which you speak and listen with patience and care full attention will correspond directly to your level, level of collaboration and genuine discernment. It is true that of the four gospel writers, Mark has the clearest sense of urgency, the fastest pace of action. But while this text does not speak directly to the timing of your making your decision, it does speak directly to your immediate need to focus, listen, and get to work. And it reminds you that you can because the kingdom of God has come near. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. As you trust in the gospel's good news that God's kingdom is present, Jesus makes you able and calls you to live into your purpose of loving and serving neighbor, sharing your faith in God so that others may feel God's love and acceptance. Dr. Matt Skinner of Luther Seminary invites us to consider the ways in which Jesus' calling isn't just the selection of a person to be a disciple, Jesus' calling is also a response to circumstances, the beginning of a new chapter. Dr. Skinner calls this an it's time story. Time to move forward from status quo to action. Time to stop hoping for change and start working toward it. God is calling faith to get busy and follow Jesus into a new season, however that may look. Keep your eyes focused firmly on the one who is calling you, the one who makes you able, 
and promises to be with you every step of the way. Keep your hearts and minds open to each other and thereby to God's future for you. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. Jesus is trustworthy and he will. Praise be to God for this good news. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Good and gracious God, you speak to us every day in different ways. Today we pray for the awareness to open our eyes 
ears, heart, and soul so that we can see, hear, and feel your message and respond in our lives of service to you. Lord, our steadfast love belongs to you. We pray that our actions and the actions of others, especially those in power, reflect your unconditional, limitless love in every decision that is made. God, you are our strong rock. We pray for all those in need, because those who are suffering, rescue those who are suffering, bring an end to hunger, accompany those who are alone or vulnerable, comfort those who are grieving, especially those we name in our hearts. Lord, we put our trust in you always. We pray for this congregation, for each and every one of us as we face uncertain times. We pray for patience as we discern our future, compassion as we engage in difficult conversations, and faith knowing you are leading us on this journey. We pray that our hearts are open to whatever your plan is and that we remember our hope is in you. Lord, it is incredible you choose to love us no matter what. Give us the grace to show and share that love to all we meet. We ask that you receive our prayers and fill us with the radiance of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I, thank you. This is great to see everybody. I invite you to share peace with each other. All these happy faces. Peace. <laughs> peace. peace, everybody. Peace, peace everyone. Peace, everybody. And now gather. Let's peace. <laughs> Um, at this time, we do remember, and of course, I know you've also received your stewardship letters, and uh, so you're in place with that, but also that uh, you remember that at this time, your ministries continue, the ministries of your church, of your, of your ministries of your church, of your community, and also of the ELCA. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And as we move into the world from not the physical sanctuary, but our hearts are there and we're together in God's spirit, receive this blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. I just wanted to say thank you to you all for um, having me with you today. I um, enjoy the time I get to spend with you, even though it's this way, and I would wish we were in the same room together. But I do hope you um, know that uh, if you want to contact me for anything, you know that you can get in touch with me with the email natalie at faitheasthartford.org. Um, and if you have any questions, any wonderings, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. That was a nice sermon. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I realized I made the mistake. I'm sitting on a swivel chair and I hope I didn't make anyone nauseous because I move a lot when I talk. <laughs> Actually, I didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Because <laughs> I, I tend to, it's all, in fact, um, at one point I was standing doing something once on Zoom like this and I realized I was, it was like I, when I was teaching and I roamed the classroom and all, and they were hearing me, but they couldn't see me because I was out of camera. So, yeah. <laughs> it's no, we're... good to see everyone. And I know you're going to have, you know, your coffee hour conversation and everything. So I'm going to, unless anybody ha has anything they want to ask me or talk to me about now, I'm going to head out and see how my granddaughter's doing if she gets to come home today or has to stay in CCMC but um your granddaughter's at CCMC is she okay yeah she was yeah she was born on Tuesday oh. and oh. Uh, my first grandchild oh, and she uh she got thank you she got yeah. to go home on Friday but she was three weeks early and she's having trouble with jaundice and bilirubin levels and stuff so they had to admit her to CCMC to get to work on that so I'm hoping maybe today she gets to come home. But, and you know, you can't go to the hospital these days, of course, to see. So, um, but with technology, it's great. FaceTime and pictures. What, what, name, what is her name? Her name is Evelyn Carmela. Oh, that's pretty. So, yeah, Carmela is after her dad's grandma who uh, died just a couple of years ago. So it's a, a very nice tribute to a very much beloved grandma, so. Yeah. Excellent. Well, have have a wonderful week, everybody. I know you've got some great uh, meetings coming up today, as well as Zoom, and I'll be eager to hear from everyone uh, how those all went and what everyone shared. So, have a wonderful day, and I will see you the next time. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Uh, Jim, I told you that Marilyn was coming. She's not. I can't hear you. You're still. Uh, All right. <laughs> Marilyn's not coming with me today. Oh, okay. Yeah, she went to what the other session. Was. Yeah, that's what she told me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Where are you going? The you. brewery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Your sanctuary. <laughs> oh, that's a shot. Oh, <laughs> The now, wine. remember, I'm an older person. You, know, you might want to get rid of me to start your church again. Well, I'm getting there. Look at <laughs> <laughs> It's distinguished, Rob. Oh, I just you. got rid of mine yesterday. <laughs> well. Dan got rid of his years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. For those who were not on before the service, just to let you know, Barbara Lewis, has gone into hospice and she's not doing well. Oh. So it's just a matter of time. So please keep your prayers going for her and her family. Oh, okay. Where Where is she, Janina? Marlboro. Marlboro. Mm -hmm. And Anne, <sighs> Anne, how are you feeling? I'm here. <laughs> are you talking to me? I know I was asking you yeah. how you feeling. I'm I'm feeling okay. I spent half of my life at the doctor. <laughs> Don't get old, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm already there. <laughs> Rob, how is your father? 
He is good. He's home. He came over the other night for dinner. Um, he's not contagious anymore. He's he's good. He's doing well. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah. Another great job with uh, you and, and Jason with the music. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. He wants a break, so. <laughs> 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 He's getting irritable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jason, we're really appreciating it. I, yeah. I will let him, I will let him I, know. I can, I can <laughs> sing with him as long as I'm on mute. Good. <laughs> so Jason, is, you can, uh, I can't. <laughs> I, I I can't hit some of the notes that he can. I mean, I can really only go up to a B comfortably. So when he, I, I kind of need him to do a lot of the melody stuff because I, I just don't have the range. So. So Rob, you and I make a whole scale then. Yes. <laughs>